All right, guys. <laughs> this is now my third time trying to record this video. The second time, I forgotten to turn on the recording audio recording on my Holy Analog Max, so I got screwed up audio <laughs> in the video talking about audio. All right, let's start. So this video is going to be about the Holy Landlock Max. It's a kind of six or nine months review after I've bought it. I've used it quite extensively, um, as well as some additional tips and tricks at the end to talk about how I record audio and what kind of things I've learned just to share with you guys to, so that everyone can benefit from my experience, I suppose. Yeah, all right, let's start. Chaigong Liu Jason, will you take this gorgeous young lady, Lui Shenhui, to be your wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness or in health, till as long as you shall live, and do keep your promise on the Chanel, Dior, and Hermes, as well as the laundry and dishes, and that you say, Yes, I do. We Let's shower them with some beautiful love petals. Give them your highest blessings and claps and cheers. All right, my face is bigger now. You know why? Time to talk about the hardware. All right, this is the transmitter. There's a display in the middle, as you can see. OLED display, very nice looking. Uh, knobs, well, sorry, one knob on this side. And a touch button kind of thing on the other side. The interface is actually quite clunky. I don't really like it much, but after using it for a while, it's okay, it's going. Um, I'll give it a pass. Okay, on this side, we have the um, monitoring output as well as the USB C connector for charging, firmware updates, bottom, charging for the charging case. So there are two ways to charge this transmitter. And on this side, we have the output, the audio output. 3.5 uh, mm output to the camera and what do I have here? Oh, uh, power or lock button. And then the bottom, bottom, there's a cold shoe mount clip to attach to the top of your camera. Right? Next, we'll talk about the transmitter comes with two of them, right? Here is one. The front is the, they call it the omnidirectional microphone. So it's actually got a big grill in front. 
Oh, huge gigantic grill. Look at that grill. Yeah, you're gonna love that grill. Wait, yeah. In the front, it had a logo, but I've basically used some black tape to cover it. And there's an LED to indicate the status of the transmitter. Okay, a, a green indicates that it is on. Um, blue indicates that the electronic noise reduction is on. Electronic noise reduction is controlled by the button over here on this side, here, and there's also a uh, button for on, off, and lock, as well as the microphone input. That's where you attach your lavalier mic or any other type of mic you want to attach this uh, transmitter to for your recording. On the other side, you have the record button, okay, as well as an LED to record uh, to indicate whether it is recording. Bottom USB C for charging firmware updates as well as to download the internal recordings of the mic onto your PC for editing. Okay, this enables you to clip this to your shirt, your belt, whatever, um, as well as a magnetic connector. I normally try to use it with a lavalier mic, <coughs> like so. But sometimes when I'm really, really lazy or I really don't have the time, I'll use the clip for it. Item number three. Charging case, Holy Land logo, LED to indicate how much charge is there left in the case. There's nothing everywhere else except for the back. USB-C for charging as well as for firmware updates of the charging case. Inside the charging case, there are slots for three items, transmitter and two receivers. I can see that above the transmitter as well as the receiver, there's a white LED to indicate whether it's been inserted correctly and charging. Great. This is a second take. <laughs> okay, tip number one. I use both transmitters if I was recording most of the time. One to record environmental audio, another one to record the talent or from the mixer or soundboard. Reason for that is that I find audio sounds much better if I were to mix the two. Uh, as of the ratio, it depends on the location as well as what you're actually recording. If you don't believe me, well, try it yourself. Now, stemming from that, um, the fact that I either record from uh, the talent or a soundboard, so there are two more additional points to add or to highlight. Point number one, try to use a lapel or lavalier mic on the talent whenever it's possible. They are much more discreet. I've heard of people attaching the transmitters to shotgun mics. I suppose it will work as well. Point number two, recording from soundboards or mixers. Recording from soundboards or mixers are a bit more complicated in that you have to somehow match the output of the soundboard with the transmitter's mic input. Mic input, soundboard's jack output. Mm -hmm. You need an attenuation cable, yeah. Or there's a very high chance of the audio peaking when you're recording it. And as we all know, nobody wants peaking audio, right? Another thing is that not every soundboard or mixer has a jack output. Some of them use uh, these things. I mean, dual mono outputs. I uh, still can't remember what these things are, but these things, yeah, these big ass things. You need one cable like that, just in case. And some really ancient stuff uses. I have no idea what these are called anymore. Whatever cable then. Well, you need a bunch of cables basically. All right, the actual tip number two. Charging case. Uh, I try to charge it to about 80%, which is about right now. Because I find that the transmitters, the two transmitters and the receiver, after using them for about four to five hours with internal recording for the transmitters, the battery would drain to about 
that's the length of most ceremonies or events that I, I shoot. So I put them back in the charging case and they charge for another hour or two before the next event or um, in case of weddings, basically the second half, or whatever it is, is the dinner reception, probably. Now, that would only drain the charging case by about 40 to 50%. So it's actually unnecessary to charge this to 100 in a normal day. So I charge it to 80% because I treat it like most of my lithium-ion batteries that are quite expensive and valuable to me, that I plan to keep for a long time. Charge them to 80%, never drain them to zero. Drain them to about 10, 15, maybe even 20% and recharge them to about 80. That makes your batteries last longer. Most batteries anyway. Right. Last bit, let's address the elephant in the room. This Holy Land Luck Max has been out for about nine months now. In the world of electronics and gadgets, it's a lifetime. And both Rode and DJI has come up with 32-bit float options for wireless lavalier mics. So, should you buy this or buy the others? Right. Honestly, uh, right now from what I've experienced with this Holy Line Lark Max, it's really, really reliable and good enough for nearly everything I do. Obviously, I'm not a professional sound engineer. I don't work on huge projects. I shoot weddings, I shoot events, and sometimes I shoot myself. So, audio quality is good. Watch the samples again, if you don't believe me. And they are versatile. They work in nearly any environment. You can stick them to a speaker pole you can stick them to a tripod, you can clip them to a shirt, you can hide them inside your shirt, hide them inside a blouse. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you where. Yeah, yeah, it works. Um, yeah, they're versatile. Battery lasts well enough. I can sync the time for it with my uh, PC or whatever. They work really well. So, Question, which one should you buy? Should you buy this Lark Max or should you buy the Rode Wireless Pro or the DJI Mic 2? Simple answer for you. How much money are you willing to spend? want the best of the best of the best of the best? Yeah, it's a bit American. <laughs> okay, you buy the Rode Wireless Pro, I suppose. How much better is it compared to this? 10% maybe, 5%. Yeah, but if you need that 10%, by all means get it. They Number two, DJI Mic 2. Actually, I'm less familiar with it because I haven't even watched much uh, review videos on that thing because I didn't really like DJI Mic 1. It has 32-bit float too. Now, the difference of between the 32-bit float and 24-bit is, everyone knows, it's whether your audio would peak easily. Now, there's actually another factor. As an engineer, I can tell you there's one thing. Let's say, for example, there are two products. One has an input range of 1 to 10 volts. Let's work with volts. It's easier. Okay. One has an input-output range of 0 to 5 volts. Both can be 24-bit or 32-bit. What does that mean? It means that 32-bit and 24-bit is the resolution. It doesn't really tell you whether it will peak. For example, if you were to have a signal above 6 volts for the second example I'm giving, the 0 to 5 volt one, 
even if you're 32-bit, 64-bit, 128-bit, 256-bit, whatever bits you have, it will still peak. So there's another value to look at. Which value? I'm not telling you. I don't have the time to look at it well. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, this works. So it's good for me. I'm, I'm no longer an engineer. So go look it up. Uh, look for something like a maximum input uh, for the mic as well as maximum input for the mic input. Make sure that is high enough. If that is not high enough, it's pointless to get 32 bits. It's like saying, oh, yeah, 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 I have 32 bits, but my analog to digital converter, the ADC, only takes 0 to 5 volts, but you are trying to stuff a 6 volt. Uh, well, you are not never trying to stuff a 6 volt into a mic, but yeah, I hope you catch what I mean. Alright, enough ranting. Um, you probably have fallen asleep already. Okay, here we go. This is the end of the video. Like if you like, dislike if you dislike, unlike, whatever. Subscribe if you like it enough. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. All right, goodbye. I'll try to leave you with some Sakinchan stuff. Yeah, that's where I tried to shoot the first version of this video. <laughs>